You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Yes, sir. You open for business? Sure am. I couldn't tell. Nobody on the street. Oh, not this time of day. It's too hot. What's your pleasure, sir? Beer. Beer she is. Cold, is it? Uh, cool's more like it. Ah, do me just fine. That'll be a nickel. Nickel it is. Come a long way, did you? Mm. <sighs> long way. Saw the name on the map. But I didn't know if it was still here. Lovely little town. Uh, what's that? I was remarking about the town. Lovely, peaceful place you got here. Yep, that it is. And the name really gets me. Happiness. That's what she's called. Happiness, Arizona. Been called happiness, uh, let's see now. Oh, almost uh, ten months now. What was it called before that? Before that? Well, it had different names. Like what? Well, it was Satan's stage stop for a while, then Dead Man's Junction, and then Boot Hill Village. Boot Hill? For the town cemetery. You passed it coming in. Well, that I did. I saw the sign on the side of the road, said it was to commemorate the, let's see, uh, how did it go? The many people killed in the course of our turbulent beginnings. Right. 128 people buried up there. That many? Every one of them shot dead. Is that a fact? Save one who died of natural causes. Well, things sure have changed. Now you got the Happiness General Store, the Happiness Hotel. It didn't used to be that way. I'll tell you something, mister. <laughs> this town wasn't fit to live in. No? No, sir, re Bob. Well, there wasn't one night you could come in this bar and not have to step over a dead body. Hard to believe. Nothing but shooting and killing going on night after night. Well, even my brother John, rest his soul... We had more folks biting the dust than we had coming to Sunday meeting. Do tell. And you know what happened? I couldn't begin to guess. Well, I'll tell you. Town just kind of took stock of itself. Got a real strong sheriff from Dodge City. Put the old kibosh on firearms. Built a jail and gallows. Enforced the law. Next thing you know, happiness, Arizona. That's quite a story. Happiness. Or a man can walk down the street and have himself a drink without checking the mirror to see who's gunning for him. That's progress, mister. That's real progress. This kind of thing, it, well, it sort of brings tears to my eyes. Well, that's all right now. Don't you be scared to go showing your true feelings. I know how it is. You live with violence and killing all your life, and then suddenly it's just like... Well, kind of like the sun coming up over a dark cloud and shining down on you with the warm rays of beneficence. That's mighty well put. I do a little preaching on the side, too. I'm not surprised to hear that. What's your line? My line? Your work. What do you do? Oh, I I'm on the road a lot. Selling? In a manner of speaking. Services is what I supply. Can I get you another beer? Yeah, that would be right kind of you. Services, you say? Now, what kind of services? Oh, you wouldn't be interested. Well, you never know. I might be able to throw a little business your way. Well, you might at that. This is the kind of town that generally can use me. What services do you supply? I bring back the dead. Introducing Mr. Jared Garrity, a gentleman of commerce, who in the latter half of the 19th century plied his trade in the wild and woolly hinterlands of the American West. He has just driven his wagon down the hot, dusty main street of a quiet, unadorned, and absolutely typical town in search of an opportunity to practice that trade. Mr. Garrity, if you can believe him, is a resurrector of the dead, which on the face of it certainly sounds like the bull is off the nickel. But to the scoffers amongst you, and all you ladies and gentlemen from Missouri, 
Don't laugh this one off entirely, at least until you've seen a sample of Mr. Garrity's wares and witnessed an example of his services. The place is Happiness, Arizona. The time, about 1890. And you have just entered a saloon where the bar whiskey is brewed, bottled, and delivered on special order, direct from the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, Mr. Garrity and the Graves, starring Chris McDonald with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Hmm, five points. Sheriff! That's better. Seven points. Sheriff Gilchrist, open up! What is it? Sheriff, come quick! What's the matter now, Jensen? The stranger, Sheriff. The stranger. What stranger? Sheriff, oh, I'm glad you're here. Well, where else would I be? Uh, I don't know. But I'm always the first man they look for. And the last they want to meet. Yep, that's true, all right. What are you doing? Practicing my knife throwing. What does it look like? Well, whose picture are you throwing at today? Same as always. My deputy. Ex-deputy. Chesley? But he done run off. Tell me about it. Oh, oh, Sheriff, you gotta come quick. It's that stranger feller. All right, all right. Just let me strap on my gun. Is that what he said? Well, where is he now? Well, no, it just up and vanished, just like that. Is that what Jensen said? I don't like this one bit. Where's the bartender? I need another drink. He's coming with the sheriff. Here he is, everybody. Simmer down now. What's this about a stranger? He's wearing a black suit and a black hat. Well, there's his wagon right outside. And a mustache and a bony face. And you should have seen his eyes. Now hold on, everybody. Let the sheriff talk. He'll answer all your questions. What did he say his name was? Uh, well, he didn't say. At uh, least I, I, I don't think he did. He got a sign on his wagon out there. By golly, you're right. Well, sure he is, Lappin. What's it say? It says, Garrity. Hmm. Then that could mean something, I reckon. That could be his name. Oh, <laughs> say, that's deduction for you. Now you know why we got law and order around here. Well, it's a chancy job. Makes a man watchful, I bet. And a little lonely. We finally got ourselves a lawman who uses scientific deduction. Why didn't I ever think of that? Don't know a fella's name, you just look at his wagon. Really wasn't no great shakes of deduction, Lapham. Well, now I beg to differ with you on that. But it points up the fact that you can't stop thinking on this job. Not ever. It's a kind of think, think, think proposition. Take this six gun, for instance. A lot of men depend on this all the time when they should be using what's under their hat. Under their hat? The old bean. <laughs> oh, by golly, nobody was ever righter than that. And besides, using the head instead of the gun, you save money on bullets. Not to mention burials and labor. You could say that again. No, thanks. Now, he said what to you, Jensen? He said that he could bring back the dead. That's what his line was, bringing back the dead. That possible, Sheriff? Better ask Doc. But we don't have a Doc in happiness. Oh, that's right. Well, sir, when he said that, I'd like to keel over in my tracks. Bring back the dead. I think to myself, well, well, I think to myself, the man's either a lunatic or he's trying to go me. That's when I went over to your office and got you, Sheriff. And when we come back, it up and gone. That's right. Interesting. Very interesting. He probably figured you'd gone to get the sheriff or some such. And he decided right then and there to make tracks. Now that's reasonable. That's exactly what he done. He's obviously some kind of a con man. And the minute he seen Jensen here leave the saloon, he knew he was going to go get the law. So he decided things was too hot for him, and he better hightail it out of town. Well, that there is a... A real deduction, all right. Except, how come he left his wagon? Gooberman, 
you're embarrassing to have around. What kind of question is that? How come he left his wagon? I can't believe you asked that. How come he left his wagon? Uh, so, tell us, Sheriff, how come he did leave his wagon out front? The way I figure it, he probably didn't get out of town after all. The way I figure it, he probably checked into the hotel or someplace like that. What other place could he go, except in the hotel? Maybe... Miss Tabby's. But Miss Tabby run off with the deputy. Thanks, Jensen, for twisting the knife. The hotel, exactly. That's what he done. Sheriff, you got a lifetime job here if I got anything to say about it. Give the sheriff a drink on me, will you, Jensen? Sure thing. Kind of you, Lampum. Real kind of you. Yeah, real kind. <gasps> That's him, Sheriff. That's him. Barkeep. Y yes sir. You got another one of those nickel beers? Uh, coming right up, sir. You're... You're Garrity? That's my family name, yes. Can I ask you a question, Mr. Garrity? Of course, Sheriff. That your wagon out there? Yep. That's my wagon. Says Garrity on it. Uh-huh. How come? Like I said, that's my family name. Oh, so that's uh -huh. what he's right. <clears throat> Mr. Jensen here tells me that you bring back the dead. That what he said? No, that's, uh, that's what you might call a uh, figure of speech, isn't it? Uh, what are you getting at, Sheriff? What I mean is, you don't actually bring back the dead, do you? On the contrary, that's exactly what I do. Bring them back. What did he say? Hit me with a shot of whiskey there, would you, Jensen? No problem. I don't suppose you'd care to tell us how you go about doing something like that. Well, no offense, Sheriff, but it's kind of a professional trade secret. Secret? I mean, like a magician. He doesn't tell you how he does his tricks. Well, I don't tell you how I bring back the dead. But I do, just the same. And you actually, you actually bring back the dead? I do indeed. Brought back healthy and hopping as the day they departed. And if that ain't a boon to mankind, somebody better tell me what is. Somebody better indeed. Fact is, gentlemen, I've heard of your town. 128 people in Boot Hill up there. I figured if a man's trying to sell cold drinks, he goes to the desert. And man's got buffalo skins and woolens, he goes to the cold north country. And if he brings back the dead, well, then go to a town where most of them are buried. And the name of that town is Happiness, Arizona, with the biggest cemetery in West Chicago. <laughs> All of them depart in this earth with unspeakable violence. All but one. Which one? Uh, that was my wife, Zelda. God rest her soul. A bustling, healthy, strapping woman of 247 pounds. Not unattractive, mind you. And then one morning, she's taken with the dyspepsia. And I'd lost her. That there is why I drink from a broken heart. How much loss can a man stand? Here, Gooberman, have one on the house. What the? Stand back, everybody. What's happened? Oh my gosh, he run over the dog. Poor thing. Is it still alive? Oh no, I sure am sorry, poor little butt. How did it happen? Dog just run right out in the street. I tried to stop, but he got under my wheels. Must have struck him a blow in the head. Not a mark on him, but he's sure dead. What do you call that, Sheriff? Hmm. Accidental animal homicide. Oh, mighty decent of you, Sheriff. No fine or nothing. No fine. You obviously couldn't help it. That's what the law says. Anybody know who the dog belongs to? Stray is what she is. Never seen her before. Nope, not around here. I'll put her up in my wagon, take her out and bury her with my own two hands. No need. Huh? Ladies and gentlemen, the proof of the pudding, so they say, is in the eating. And the proof of a service is in the performing. Hallelujah. The dog is certainly dead, isn't she? No question about it. Then, gentlemen, 
I shall take it upon myself to return this gentle creature to the land of the living. What do you mean by that, mister? I shall resurrect it. Stand back, all of you. I ask only one thing, an order that I may conduct the operation satisfactorily and completely. What's that, Garrity? Would you all turn around? What? And look the other way, so you're not watching me. How's that? If you don't mind, please, show me your backs for just a moment, out of respect for the dead. August Ridge Grand Wazoo Intercoiter Metaluna Magic Land of Alakazam. Eureka! Sit up, girl. Shake hands. Shake. That's a good dog. Chasing a bird, I'd say. Ladies and gentlemen, I rest my case. He done a miracle! That's what I'd call it a miracle! Magic is what it is. My dear friends, citizenry of Happiness, Arizona, it's with no small degree of pleasure that I stand here in this quaint, picturesque Main Street, performing what I modestly claim as an accomplishment of some dimension. As you've all seen, I've just brought a dog back to life. It's not natural. Please, hear me out. It was not black magic, and it was not the devil's work. It is the application of scientific principles which I have picked up over the years. While traveling extensively in the Himalayan mountains for seven years, I served as personal apprentice to the High Lama. But how? How'd you do it? Simply by utilizing certain cosmic forces. What are they? With a concurrent application of mystical electrolysis. <laughs> Let's all have a drink on it. Fortunately, I've brought with me in my wagon here a supply of all the necessary herbs and spices to repeat the process. And what I have done for that dog, why I can do the same for your loved ones. May their souls rest in peace. For the moment. You mean you can bring back my Zelda? And my former partner? And my late husband? How about my mother? And my old horse? I had a fiancé. Came down with the chillblains. What if we don't know where they're buried? Peace, friends. This is a time for meditation, for communion with your most sacred beliefs. For tonight, at midnight, joy abundant will reign in happiness, Arizona. The dead will be returned to you. All in one piece. Well, now have a cigar, mister, on me. Well, thank you. <coughs> now go to your homes and prepare for the ultimate happiness. Hello, spirits of Boot Hill. Are you there? I say, spirits, I'm talking to you. Garrity here. Make yourselves known to me. Would you do that little thing, please? Spirits, come forth. Now, I tell you, I'm running out of time here. No sign of him. He's up at the cemetery. Still? Four hours he's been up there now. That place always froze my guts, even at high noon in the bright sun. Imagine what it must be like after dark. I don't want to imagine. You know, one time when I was a kid... Please, Lapham. I had a pet goldfish. In Arizona territory? No, this is back in Springfield. Anyway, I had this goldfish, and my cat used to watch it swim around night and day. What was your cat's name? My pussy cat? Her name was Tabby. Lapham. Anyway, one night, 
she knocked the fishbowl over trying to catch it, and I got so mad, I chased her out of the house. Spare me. And wouldn't you know that cat ran out and leaped in the pond. Now, it was the dead of winter, and there was ice on the water, and, well, to make a long story short, when I pulled her out, she was frozen solid. You could have throwed her through the air like a boomerang. What's a boomerang? Never mind. Let him get finished. So I carried her back in the house all stiff like that so as I could bury her the next day. And you know something? In the middle of the night, that cat thawed out and came back to life. Started running around like she was possessed. I hid for my life. The sound she made just wasn't human. Of course not. It was a cat. Be that as it may, the cat was never the same. <laughs> what finally happened to her? She ate some spoiled mackerel and expired for the second time. She didn't come back from that one, sad to say. Imagine. Can you just imagine? Imagine what, Uberman? My own little blossom. My own Zelda. The lonely days and lonely nights. And at midnight, she's coming back to me. Saints preserve us. Uh. Listen, what's that? Sounds like Mr. Garrity's finished his work. Evening, gentlemen. Evening, Garrity. Whiskey, please. Uh, sure thing. Another. Yes, sir. How... How did it go up there? Go? On Boot Hill. The cosmic impulses are... Yes? Incredible tonight. Absolutely incredible. You mean you're finished? All finished. <laughs> What's that clock say? 11.35. Good. Good? They'll be falling down any time now. Takes them a while because they walk so slow. But they're ahead of schedule. They are? I wasn't five minutes into the ceremony when the earth started to heave. A mighty anxious crop of folks up there. Mighty anxious. It'd do your heart good to see them wiggling around under the sod. That right? Just like some happy colt raring to face life again. Did... did you happen to see my Zelda up there? Why, I might have. Oh, you couldn't have missed her. She's the biggest thing on the hill. Only funeral that ever took nine pallbearers. That was some service. Doggone if she wasn't a strapping girl. I remember the time she threw me out of the house. Through a window, as a matter of fact, I was 18 feet in midair. That picture behind the bar. Which one? The man with the handlebar mustache. Your beloved brother, isn't it? John? <laughs> sure is. How'd you know? Reminds me of someone I've seen quite recently. Shot by accident last March. There was a gunfight in here, and he got hit by a stray bullet. Tall man like you, with a kind of a limp. How? How'd you know? Your brother was the last man buried. And the last ones buried are the first ones to come up. Come up? And then down. Down? Down the hill, into town. You say something out there, Mr. Garrity? I believe I do. What? Why, I believe that's him coming now. Down the middle of the street. Look, do you see? That's him! How can you tell? Look at how he's dragging his foot. Can't see his face. I was right, Mr. Jensen. You... you were? It's your beloved brother, John. And a more decent and honorable citizen never pulled a cork out of a bottle. Or so I'm told. He... he was a no-good thieving bum. He spent more time digging in the till and stealing whiskey than he did serving customers. Why, Mr. Jensen, you dishonor the man, and here he returns to you from the grave after that unfortunate accidental bullet fired by someone caught him between the shoulder blades. I'm here. I'm a coming, coming back to you. Hold on! Mr. Garrity! Yes? How much do you charge for bringing back the dead? Well, just room and board, Mr. Jensen. My major source of income is the pleasure I derive from bringing happiness to my fellow man. 
Well then, how would you like to increase that source of income real quick? You'll have to speak a bit plainer, Mr. Jensen. How much would you take to put him back up on the hill? I'm asking you. To put him back? My brother, I mean. In his grave, where he belongs. Hmm. What does that mean? Well, oh, it's a difficult procedure, Mr. Jensen. Once the resurrection has taken place, it requires a maximum effort to replant them, so to speak. Would a hundred dollars pay for the effort? A hundred? In gold. Well, shall we say a thousand? What does five hundred do to you? Well, it warms me a little, but I still feel drafty. Let's make it seven fifty, shall we? <laughs> Deal. Just plain old disappeared. He did. It's true. He's gone. Can't see him no more. You're right, Garrity. He vanished like a shadow on the street. Thank the good Lord. It was your brother, all right. I saw him with my own eyes. Tall man with a limp, just walking toward us as big as you please. And then... He just plumb disappears. Yeah, that's right. Garrity did it. He's a miracle worker. Well, that's life. Well, let's go inside and have a drink. But don't fret, friends. He'll be followed soon enough by the others. The others? Including your beloved wife. Your lonely hours are a thing of the past, Mr. Guberman. Your Zelda will soon be back with you to share your life and restore your peace of mind. Well, uh, no disrespect, but, um... Yes? Uh, what I mean is, uh, she was the flower of all womanhood and everything. Of that I have no doubt. But on six different occasions, she broke my left arm. That thing was in a cast so much, I developed a permanent list. Your point, Mr. Guberman? Well, I... I sort of hate to disturb her rest. Get me? I'm beginning to. What'll it take to put her back? A difficult assignment, Mr. Guberman. Let's say $500. Uh, with me, it was $750. Jensen, I'm disappointed in you. And ashamed, truly ashamed. Your own dear brother. And you, Guberman, your own wife. Garrity, as an official of this town, I apologize for these men. I'm humiliated. Nothing less than humiliated. I don't blame you, Sheriff. Not one bit. But you, I could perceive immediately that you are made of sterner stuff. Well, I suppose that's true. I didn't see you quake in your boots. Just because Lightning Peterson will be one of the departed returning tonight. Lightning Peterson? <gasps> You killed him yourself, didn't you, Sheriff? And he was supposed to be the fastest gun in the territory. Boulder Dash. I say Boulder Dash. Lightning Peterson, indeed. You killed him once, Sheriff, in an honest showdown, and if his internment hasn't taught him anything, you can do it again. Uh... Something, Sheriff? You're resurrecting that gunman along with the rest? It's a mass operation. I see. <clears throat> I see. As a matter of fact, it provides a marvelous opportunity for you to dispel those ugly rumors I've heard. Rumors? That you actually shot Peterson in the back late at night, when he was alone and unarmed, while you had six deputies at your side. Hold on. Now, I know you faced up to him in broad daylight, a man of your character, but this will give you a second chance to shoot him down if need be, face to face. Have a seat, Sheriff. You don't look so good. If you really want to know, Mr. Garrity, I don't think Peterson should be resurrected. I think he's, uh, a menace to society. Fact is, Sheriff, judging by that clock on the wall, I'd say he's already on his way down. Personally, I wouldn't mind facing him again, but why go to all the trouble? Trouble? For a man of your skill? Would $500 put him back up there? Lightning Peterson? You do him an injustice, Sheriff. He was quite a lad with a gun, and mighty active at that. A $1,200 job, minimal. Sold. Just bring me the bottle, Jensen. Mr. Garrity, are you in there? Ma'am? You happen to see a scrawny little man up there? 
kind of gimlet-eyed. Hmm. Name? Perkins. Ephraim Perkins. A relative? Ex-husband. And no tighter man ever squeezed a silver dollar. Thing of it is, I'm married again. And if the truth be known, I never did care much for Ephraim while he was living. And I don't properly see why I should have to go through it all again. Besides, what would I do with two husbands? I can appreciate your dilemma. A uh, hundred dollars? Five, madam, would be a bit closer to home. Oh, fella, Uncle Jeb, left me his farm. See, uh, how much would it take to keep him there? Hold on now. One at a time. Uh, my father-in-law, big man, asked to be buried with a bullwhip. <laughs> Just ain't no reason at all why he should come back. Now, I'll have to write these down. My husband, Charles. Mean cuss. Nobody liked him. Had to hire mourners from out of state. Order, please. I'll take your money one at a time. Can you make change? Well, let's see here. Who's next? Who oh, there? Who? Oh. Here, boy. <laughs> there you go. Nice puppy. Nice little boy. Got a bone for you in the back of the wagon. You're paid for playing dead like that. That you, Ace? Right here. You're late. Couldn't help it. Town was the ripest pair we ever plucked. <laughs> they couldn't open their money bags fast enough. What's the take? Whew. See for yourself. I haven't had time to count it. Will you look at that? Considerably more than you earn as an actor on the stage, my friend. Considerably more. Played the part well, though, didn't I? Beautifully. The handlebar mustache was a nice touch. Well, that's why I brought my makeup kit. Never know what you'll need. I've checked the itinerary. Our next stop is Tucson. We'll pitch camp and get a good night's sleep. And you go in there in the morning and get a line on the place. We'll see which one of the dear departed you can impersonate tomorrow night. Now climb in. Well, let's get a move on before that sheriff turns suspicious. I tell you... I'll be glad to get gone from this cemetery. Creepiest one yet. You don't believe in ghosts, do you, Ace? <laughs> well, I never did, but this one. There's so many tombstones everywhere. Man thinks he's yeah, hearing things after a while. Not this one. The folks up here on Boot Hill, they're buried deep enough. So long, friends. Real sorry I couldn't perform what I laid claim to. Oh, uh, rest in peace now, all of you. Come on, let's go. Come on. Get the dirt out of my eyes, will you, John? Sure enough, Evan. Wait, hold on. You got a worm in your nose. You know, the man don't do himself justice. The actor who played you wasn't worth a darn. Terrible mustache. But that there Garrity, he sure can do a job of resurrecting. Sure can. Don't know where he learned them words, but they worked. Didn't they, Lightning? Let's get on to town. We ought to wait for the others to dig out. Don't worry, they'll be along. Besides, I got a lot of drinking to catch up on. There's a yellow skunk of a sheriff I aim to settle a score with. And a little pipsqueak of a sot just waiting to get his arm broke. And I am just the lady to do it. Oh, my name ain't Zelda Gooberman. Let's go, boys. Just the four of us. It's clobbering time. <laughs> Exit Mr. Jared Garrity, a would-be charlatan, a make-believe con man, and a sad misjudger of his own rather considerable talents. This haunting little fable respectfully submitted from a soon-to-be-empty cemetery located atop a dark hillside on one of the more dangerous slopes leading into and out of the Twilight Zone. <laughs> Thank you.
Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at twilightzoneradio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered while supplies last at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. Mr. Garrity and the Graves, starring Chris McDonald with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and based on a script by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Rich Komenik, Doug James, Christian Stolte, Roderick Peoples, Linda Ryder, Michelle Graff, Vince Amari, Roger Walski, and Carl Amari. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking.